All right, so we're back with our in in focus, in focus podcast, and today, you know, I feel like I must have been doing something right in my life because this is like technically our our third episode, and I already have a huge guest. I have <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson here with me. <laughs> wow! And uh, so I feel like, oh my gosh, dude, who am I gonna get next? I mean, I think uh, Russ would be like a good. Uh, who are, who does Russ look like? He looks like uh, oh, like He's a like, young, very young Gordon Gecko. There he is. Yeah, I you know. I like to, Italian version. I like to think I work with Superman. Honestly, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean to wake up and go to work to that every day. I mean, I mean that guy is, and he's just like, yeah, like he just he just spews confidence with his quietness. Oh man, and we'll talk about him a little bit down the road. But yeah, he's uh, he's an amazing man, humble man, but yeah, he's a beast. He's All right, beast. so we're not really here with the Rock. But you look like The Rock. Oh, well, I always talk about that. This guy looks like The Rock. Um, <laughs> so this is David Meza, and you're a personal trainer here on the Central Coast. Yes. And you've been, how long have you been personal training here on the Central Coast? Well, first, thanks for the introduction. Yes. For sure. I mean, I'm here with RP3. Oh, like, you on, got bro. you got initials. Like, I, you know, you don't even got a name yeah, anymore. Really? Just, there's RP3. Yeah, you like, just got to figure them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got an AKA already. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No. No, thanks for having me on today. And, and I appreciate, you know. Uh, being a local trainer, you know, put me on your podcast and yeah. and just answering your question. Yeah, I've been here trainer on the coast, and you mentioned Russell. So uh, we uh, we uh, I work out of Griffin Fitness, yeah, right here locally locally owned uh, personal training business. Uh, I've been doing it, you know, off and on all my life, but taking it seriously. Yeah, over the last eight years, made it a career. Yeah, so um, and it's the town has been great uh, as far as the community, as far as training. You know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And was able to pull the trigger yeah. at a certain point in my life. I flipped scary. the switch. Scary, scary. Very scary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously, you've been doing it, like, a long time. Because you don't get, like, your physique overnight. Like, it's this is years of working out and, and discipline and, and all that. So, and I always think that, too. Because sometimes, you know, I'm not trying to bash anybody. But I on social media, there's some local people. I'm like, bro, I don't want you to train me. I look better than you. Right. And I don't even work out. Right. So, I, for me, that's a big thing is, like, what does your trainer look like? If if like he or he or she looks like how you would want to look, then I think that's 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 the that's the first thing. That's kind of like me making bad videos, and then you and how would I expect anybody to hire me, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's your money. You're 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 investing in yourself. So yeah. you know what are you going to put your money in? It's a lot like you know the stock market. Are you gonna not that I play it, but you know you're looking at your numbers daily. You look yeah. at your bank account daily. Yeah. So the same thing with. You know what you're investing in your body. If you don't have your health, like they say, you don't have wealth because you can't do anything else yeah, well. Do. So, yeah. I've known you for a while. Yeah, um, and I've seen um, when you're like still kind of like side hustling. But yes, prior to me knowing you, I don't know if I knew you when you had your career. Uh, so, what did you do? Because you quit like a you quit someone's dream job, basically. Yeah, that's like for for you to get into what you were doing. That's a, a really good paying job. Benefits are probably really good, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a career. You right. re, that's where people retire. Yeah. So what did you work? You know, and that's, that's I'm glad, glad you're bringing that up because, you know, I've probably had about five jobs my whole life. Yeah. You know, growing up, that's worked at a Speedway uh, in the oh, valley. Dang. Grew up in the Central on the or, uh, in the Central Valley. Yeah. Uh, even though all my family's here, this always felt like home. But I, I worked at a Speedway, worked at a gas station, went to college. Yeah. And then worked in the sheet metal industry. But then I got a job at the electric company, PG&E. So, yeah. you know, and that's true. You think, well, you know, you grow up thinking, oh, man, you're making whatever, six figures. You have the job. You have the benefits. Yeah. You've made it. Yeah, I'm sure your family was probably like, my son. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Got the best, you know. Oh, yeah, my dad was pumped. You oh, know? dude, like, my dad would have been pumped. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and I remember thinking, oh, man, this is a great job. It, it is. is. It really is. It, it really is, you yep. know. And what got me there, though, and I have to say the backstory on this is that, you know, one day I walked into my prior job, which was a sheet metal job. Yeah. I walked in and he said something that inspired me. He said, I own you. And Ooh. that was the first time I think that I can remember where my blood pressure went up oh. and it went right back down and I flipped a switch and I went home and I got on, I got online. Yeah. And within three weeks, life is all about timing. Within three weeks, I had that job. Yeah. Within a year, I doubled my pay. Yeah. That was a big moment for Whoa. me. Oh, I would have been a big, big moment. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, and I look back and I'm like, you know what? I appreciate that he said that because otherwise I probably would have stayed there. You would have still been there. Yeah. So uh, then I went into, you know, the, the electric field. 
And I had a great job doing that. I was in a great department because I was meter reading. So I was out and uh, about. Cool, Man, yeah. I was walking. I was in neighborhoods. Got I was, them tan legs. Exactly. The tan was, <laughs> yeah, it had some tan lines though, but you know. <laughs> tan was on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> we took care of those. There's things you could do about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was great. I was out, able to talk to people. The exercise was great. Uh, but then I had to take a transfer because of those smart meters were coming in. Yeah. And so I had to take a job at Diablo Canyon, which is not a bad thing. And shout out to all my boys out there. Yeah, I know, I know a guy. Yeah, I know a few guys out there yeah. too. And, uh, but then I started realizing, man, I didn't have time to work out. I was working yeah. these 12-hour days. Uh, they I was there. tired. And nothing wrong with it, but everyone was focused on their 401ks and what, you know, what's, I'm like, man, that's like 30, 40 years away here. Like, yeah, I want to live like for now. now. This yeah. is, you're never going to get any younger than you were yesterday. No. So, uh, Russ and me had talked about this prior to, he had already had Griffin going. Yeah. Um, but we talked about making that jump and I'm so grateful that he gave me the platform to be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, I did some side hustling. Like you said, I worked that job. I would come in the evenings, come home from a 12 hour day, train a few people. Yeah. And then fortunately, like I got to be able to take a couple months off. Yeah. And that's when I realized I had a little PTSD from it. Not gonna lie. Yeah. You're used to collecting a check every two weeks. Scary. Scary. Yeah. But I got a taste of it. Then I got to go back. And then I came off again one more time for six months and I said, okay, it's time to make the switch. Yeah. And it's I weird. People don't realize, you know, you quit your job to, to be an entrepreneur and yeah, it's scary because you're not going to make any money, but you kind of, even when you start making money and you can support yourself, at least for me, I was like, I can support myself or my family. I'm making money. Yeah. But I also kind of felt like a loser. Yes. Because you don't, you're not going to work. You're so conditioned to go to work yes. that when you don't go to work, even though you're bringing in money and everybody's fine. There's a moment where you feel like a loser. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Weird, huh? it, it took me a year. I kept looking every day thinking in my mind, I could go back. Yeah. So I would look every day at what jobs are coming up. And I, they actually called. They actually called not too long ago for the outage and stuff. But, you know, I was able finally to not look anymore. Once I flipped the switch, the personal training career took off because your energy yeah. is fully fully in there, devoted to yeah. that. And yeah. I, 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 I agree to that, too. You know, obviously... There was a point where I was doing this and I wasn't making any money um, and I was applying for jobs yeah. and I, the Tribune and Slow wanted to hire me and um, I literally just, I told my wife that uh, that they didn't hire me, but I called them and I told them I was good. Yeah. Um, I, after I made enough money where she wouldn't care, Yes. Uh, I told her the truth, but uh, I just, <laughs> I just. Hey, that's all right. Hey bro, you know, yeah. I, you know, you just was a white lie, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh I just really felt how you, what you're saying is I felt like I had to concentrate on my business. Yeah. I had to be available when Dave needs me. Yes. Like, I can't be like, all right, cool, Dave, I'll be there after 530 because I'm work. Like, no, yeah. Dave wants me there at 2, I'm going to be there at 2. Yeah. You know, and I feel like for me, I need to have my back against the wall. Because if not, I mean, I probably, maybe I'll still be at the Tribune. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So not, it's not, not that it's a bad job, but that's not what I wanted. And it was, and I was in a situation where it wasn't maybe the best decision, but it, we were in a bad spot already. So I was yeah. kind of like. Right. And you learn to live on less. Yeah, we like lived on said, less. You feel that, that loser moment and that mentality because yeah. society says you need to be doing this. Yeah. And you went the other way. Yeah. And I feel like this is full circle because seven, I think it was seven years ago, eight years ago, yeah. we shot a video at Griffin and yeah. you were hustling then. Yeah. You, you fit us in on a Saturday. We, we did it. Yeah. Cause I, yeah. Cause a lot of you were, I mean, you guys are like some of my first clients. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was doing them on the weekends. Yeah. I was selling cars. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And look at look at now. Eight years later, yeah. it's manifested into this for you and me. So it really shows you that diverting your energy solely into something, yeah. you it will grow. Yeah, it will grow. it's just I think the 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 scary part is like figuring out is like I don't know. You know, sometimes I think people wonder like, am I? It's it's not working. How long do I keep doing this? Yeah. But it's like I don't know. I just think. You, if you have a passion for it, you're just going to keep going. You're going to keep going and keep yeah. learning. I think about like our field, you know, you can, I would say this to any young trainer that's getting into the field, go get as many certifications as you can. Go get the education. I mean, even now I take them, I've taken more the last two years than I honestly have in a long time. Yeah. You only pull probably 10%. Yeah. You know, you watch YouTube or whatever you do oh, for yeah. your, you know, upskilling yourself. Yep. You pull 10% from that. But over time, over eight years, I mean, look at how well you, yeah. you know, you're, how much you've grown. Yeah. The same thing training with me, how much yeah. it's changed. And you just put yourself in, uh, 
I mean, at least in like real life situations, you put yourself in bad spots and oh, then you yeah. have to figure out how to get yourself out of it. You're like, oh, yeah. shoot, you know? And like I, I like what you said about putting your back against the wall. We perform better. Yeah. We learned during the pandemic. Yeah. Everybody was back, got our back against the wall. Yeah. Who performed? It was about survival. Yeah. We and you all guys did. got hit like. Yeah. The fitness industry, you know, just did. the beauty industry. Like, oh, all be- yeah. beauty. At, I would say beauty and fitness, anything to make you look good. They're like, we're going to make you guys ugly. Yeah, they didn't want us to be looking good. <laughs> yeah, you know? They wanted us to, yeah, order Everybody out. Everybody else had an excuse. Yeah. Like, every, like, for me, I was essential because I was, like, media. Yeah. Um, I, even, a dude, the car wash, like, there's a splash and dash. Oh, yeah. They, they were a part of car care. Right. I remember hearing that because it, of disinfected or something. Yeah, like, line. it's, yeah. like, everybody found a loophole, and there was zero loopholes for you guys. Yeah, and we rolled, you know. Just Zoom, but it's right. It's and not the same energy, though. It's not the same, you know. And I'm grateful, you know. The people you surround yourself with make you. We, you know, within yeah. 48 hours, we flipped. To, we made. We pivoted. I will say. Yeah. Into Zoom, uh, with all the in and out, can be inside, outside. We adjusted to that too. We, I was talking to Russ about this the other day. We were dragging in hundred pound mats every day in the morning and afternoon. Yeah. You know, because we just yeah we were dragging them in and out, dragging equipment. But we made it work, and two years later, you know, you rolled, and it was, yeah. Hey, you got those you um, battle wounds. You do. You, got those battle you wounds. do. And you become stronger from it. You know, it's like yeah. a muscle. You break down a muscle, it comes back stronger. The same thing with your mentality. You know, you break it down, you put your back against the wall, and it will come back. You got a choice. Yeah. You come back stronger, you can sit in it. Well, I think, too, as a competition level, because we're in business, business is a competition. It really is. Yes. Um, it took out the people that didn't deserve to be in your space. You know? Yeah. And also, too, it's just, like, you guys survived the worst economical thing that could happen to you guys. Right. I don't think there's a worst thing. L- literally, it was illegal for you to work out. Right. At a gym. Yeah. Even outside. Yeah. Remember? They yes. were closing down beaches. Yeah. Like, they literally, like, I mean, maybe it was on purpose, but it just seemed like they were, they, like, were trying to crush, like, the fitness industry. Yeah. And... You guys survived it, dude. We survived it as a, you know, a small business, definitely. Yeah. You know, it showed that people were willing to work out. Technology blew up. Yeah. You know, obviously, Peloton, you know, yeah. and blew up. Peloton's going down now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're not making quite the money they were. I'm, I'm sure they're doing okay. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, yeah, you can see how technology really blew up. And the people that wanted to work out, they were going to find a way. Yeah, they're going to work out. Yeah. Yes. Even if even if gyms didn't offer anything, they would still go run or do oh yeah take it back to the total workout yeah (laughs) putting your homie on your back and doing squats exactly (laughs) exactly grocery curls you know whatever (laughs) Whatever. you had to do you know so yeah we were able to survive and like all of us it was a good thing yeah we learned a lot you learned a lot yeah it was tough but i mean i think people that um have a drive they're gonna figure it out yes and you know russ is very quiet but he's a he's an animal inside yeah let's talk about it because he's not gonna talk about no he's never he's gonna be like yeah you know uh yeah, I'm going to tell you this, this guy, not only is he uh, one of my closest friends, he is the most loyal, humble guy you will ever meet. Yeah. And uh, anybody who truly knows him knows that where it's, it's not smoke and mirrors. No, um, we you know, the way he runs business. Uh, I know him personally, the way he runs his life. I mean, he's probably running right now by the shop. Yeah, I've seen him running out in yeah. the streets. I'm like, he's yeah. always I- working harder. Yeah. I'm going to say that everybody else, but he works very, very hard Yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate the way he's ran business and through the pandemic. He was a, just a rock we could all lean on. Yeah. And we came together as a team. Yeah. And I know you've known him from other avenues. Cars, yeah. Just, cars and, you know, personal and, you know, uh, through friends. And yeah. I mean, to me, yeah, Russ is just like, he would never admit it. Never. And I, he I, would never say these and things. And even if we if we were sitting, he was sitting here right now, he would be like, dude, you guys need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. I, but he is. He's he's squared away, man. He you know, is. That's why I feel like he's he's gotta be, you know, like a low key multimillionaire. Cause it, <laughs> you would if he was, you would never know. You would never that know. Guy would he's live that guy would yeah. live. Like this, he just is a simple man. He's a simple man. Simple man, which, dude. You know what? Simple which is man. hard. Yeah. It's hard to be that in this day and age of where there's so much access. To see what other people are doing yes. or faking, yes, um, and it's uh, it's like, and you know, it's just it's hard to just like not want to keep up with the Joneses right now, right? And he could care less. And I love, you know, they say opposites attract, and I feel like me and him have been good friends for so long, yeah, because of that. You yeah. know, it's this this balancing act, and the way he runs business, the integrity, the honesty, 
you know, in any business, that's what you want. Yeah. And that, that is what Griffin stands for. Yeah. And he's held that line for anybody that walks through there, for any trainer that walks through there, he's held the line for like for standards. Business. standards, standards as far as business is, is core values. It's top shelf. That's yeah. just all it is. He's, he's, top, like, he's top shelf dude. I'm not taking any less. Yeah. You should see the bourbon and tequila he drinks. <laughs> top, <laughs> top shelf. shelf. Yeah, he won't let anything but top shelf touch his lips. <laughs> He's like, I work out too hard for this. Um, another thing we, we've talked about in the past, yeah. um, last time we were on the phone, um, was just I would say, you know, I've, I see it obviously in my industry. You see it in your industry. And I feel like um, it's just bringing value versus discounts. You know, I feel like everybody's all about, I'll do it for 50 bucks. Oh, I'll do it yes. this. And then you're like, yeah. okay, cool. You'll do 50 bucks, but... I mean, what are you really giving these people? Right. And I feel like for me, you know, somebody could pay me X amount of dollars for a video and they could pay someone a lot less. And I mean, you know, yeah, obviously my videos be better. Right. But for you, I think it's even more important because someone could train somebody for a lot less, but they could also hurt those people. Absolutely. And that could last forever. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, you bring up a good point, value, putting it on your craft, whatever it is in, in the training business you know, you see it a lot where people are at a race to the bottom. Yeah. This guy's doing it for 15. Well, this person's doing it for 10. You know, and what does that do for the next guy? What does it do for the, the people that are taking it seriously and trying to make a living make off a living. it and feed their families? Yeah. So, you know, and it's, it's, the same, it's the same business plan that they've had forever. They're still doing the same things. Yeah. But do you want to be that type of trainer that packs in 20 people for $10? Do you really think that that's going to bring a great product? Yeah. So, like we talked about, your body is your investment. You decide. So, when you're looking for a trainer, those are some of the things you want to look at. What's their past? What's their present? How do they... How do they carry their self? You yeah. know, what is their advice on things? What do past clients look like now? You know, so yeah. past and present, I should say. So those are all those little things. Don't look for the Groupon deal. Yeah. You know, it, this is an important investment. Yeah. Long time. You know, you don't go buy a car hoping it, you know, for the cheapest thing, hoping it lasts forever. No. Well, the same thing with training. You know, you want longevity in whatever you're doing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's super important. I mean, I just feel like, you know, but it's hard. It's hard for people do want to save a buck. But, I mean, I feel like you got to, like, look in the long run and see, like, are you really costing yourself more? I mean, yeah. I mean, like yeah. I said, you could get hurt. You can get hurt. Yeah. And, and that, you can that get hurt. I, I think, too, you know, people, customer service is big. Oh, yeah. So when you lose trust yeah. from one person that's in this industry, yeah. you kind of carry that to the next relationship or trainer, I yeah. should say. Yeah. You're a little leery. So lots of times, you know, I'm going to be honest, we, people go for the, let's just say the, the cheaper version yeah. uh, of the car, but then they end up, you know, two or three cars later, they're with us. Yeah. And they see the difference. But now they're tainted because their trust has been broken, yeah. which is not a problem for us because, as mentioned, the integrity and honesty in the way we run business is very, very up front. Yeah. We're not hiding anything. It's very open. This is what you're getting. Yeah. You got questions, very open communication. Yeah. And you guys text a lot. We, we do. Right? Yeah. Okay, like well. literally like if you're on your plan, I know like you guys text like all the time, keeping tabs. Well, you know, we don't get strong thumbs just by I know, right? Girls, huh? you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was a machine in there for a strong thumb. <laughs> but I do notice, I do know that. I mean, obviously my wife's on your plan. Yeah. Um, and I just know like, and I've been on, uh, I think I've trained with you, but I've trained with Russ, Russ like yeah, seriously yeah. before. And that, that fool's on my ass. Yeah. Like he's like, text me. What are you eating? <laughs> what are you going to eat today? What yeah. did you eat? Yes. You know? And then every time I would text him like, Hey, like I'm going to go eat sushi. Like, right. well, what do I get? You know? Cause I would be like, I don't know. And he'd be like, just get this, get that. Like always responsive. So yeah. I feel like customer service. That, strong. you know, people just need a little bit of accountability. Yeah. Honestly, you don't need all the gimmicks. You don't need, yeah. you know, the fast 30 day cleanse or whatever out there, whatever hot now it's yeah. about at our, I'm going to be honest at our age, you know, it's about what's going to last quality, yeah. quality, you know, yeah. you're paying for it. You want quality. So whether it's customer service or anything else, or just anything. Yeah. The support basically. The support, yeah. Um, so you've been with Russ full time for how long? Uh, going on, going on eight years. Yeah. Eight years. Yeah. And, um, so now what's going on? Oh man. You know what? Uh, going back to, this goes way back, but 
you know, I am, things are coming to life that I manifested years ago. And I say this to whoever's listening, whatever you think of in your mind, good and bad will happen. Yep. So think positive. Yeah. <laughs> because bad things will happen. Yeah. Um, it's true. But I got a lot going this year. You know, the pandemic changed a lot of things. It unearthed a lot of things for people. But for me personally, um, it brought some things to life. Yeah. And um, to be honest, I am, this is a great, first quarter is going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm going to have a baby. Nice. Congrats. And I'm opening a, ba- a gra- uh, uh, opening a business. Yeah. Uh, there's three of us owners. Uh, that's going to be opened around the time she's due. So it'll be fun times. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, yeah dude. So, well, congrats, man. It's a, do- it's a girl. It's a baby girl. <laughs> yes. I know yes. I have a son now, but after having a girl, I was like, I wanted another girl. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I was really pumped. You know, we yeah. had talked about like we, you know, you kind of favored the girl side and it happened. Yeah. And I'm, I'm psyched, man. She's well, now be- that I do have a son. Yeah. It's just like my daughter was so much or she is still, but she, at his age, she was so much more nicer and cuddly yeah. and just like gentle and my son is a freaking tank bro <laughs> he is like i don't like he's a boy yeah you know but he's just like he's not like her you know he's yeah. just yells he screams he's like smashes into things <laughs> and i feel like my daughter was more like just chill you yeah. know um but i mean they're a blessing dude i mean i feel like for me personally obviously my i had my daughter when i was 26 and that's when i'm and i know you're a different point in your life but that's when i like um, started taking life seriously. Yeah. Because I, I was terrified, dude. I, of course. You know, I agreed to have a baby yeah. with my wife. And then, one, you know, obviously, you know, you do the deed. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, once, uh, it does, you don't find out f- five minutes later, no, you know. No. So once a few weeks went by and she was pregnant, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh. It really happened. I was like, oh, wait, am I still sure? Yeah. You know, if I want to have, because it's a big responsibility. I mean, we went, we went to multiple doctors because I was like, are you sure? I was so scared, yeah. but once I was like, okay, this is a third doctor. <laughs> There's, it's, it, it is what it's it is. Hap- yeah, it's you happening. You know, I was just like, dude, I have to get serious. Yeah. Um, and it, it it changed, like, me personally. Um, obviously, it still took some time because, obviously, it doesn't see hammers overnight. But right. it was a big blessing, dude. And I feel like I attribute, like, everything to, like, my daughter because I had to get serious. And I like what you're saying because that has been my why uh, – for a lot of things over the last couple of years is my daughter. Yeah. And I can't, moving forward, I can't even imagine, but it's happening. You know, there's a bigger picture when you have children. Yeah. And going back to your point, you know, I never wanted kids. That desire was never in my body. Even though we were created to have them, I had moments where I watched a movie or I held my nephew and like, yeah, this is cool, but no, we're yeah. good. Yeah. I want to take Something changed over the pandemic. Something changed inside of me. Like I wanted a child. Yeah. And, um, and it's happening, you yeah. know, and I think she's going to be a strong willed baby. I mean, she's already doing flutter kicks and her mama, her mom is strong. Yeah. You know, I got some decent genes. So I think she's yeah. going to, I'm hoping I'm like, come on, baby. She's going to come out <laughs> CrossFit already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Already doing pull-ups and stuff. Exactly. So that's legit. I'm um, going back to what's happening here. The first of the year, you know, I think about the pandemic, we talked about Peloton and technology and all that's happened you know, coming out of it, people do want interaction. Yeah. But we're caught now in this world of technology, and human interaction, energy. So that's what we're bringing to the Central Coast. Nice. We are bringing a, um, a product. There's nothing like it around here. The nearest one is Santa Barbara. And then going north, the nearest one is Fresno. Okay. And uh, this is called F45. Okay. It's a functional training group workout. So the technology's there, there's TVs, there's always two personal trainers on the floor. Okay. So even though you have this group setting, you're going to get that personal training experience. Yeah. Um, it's all about accountability and community. So we have different challenges that will be brought out every every two months, a new challenge starts. Okay, switch it up. Switch it up, it keeps people accountable. We'll have the body scanner there, you know, to keep people once again accountable. It's like high tech. High tech, man. So that's just it. This yeah. that technology, people meshing. Yeah. It's like know. a mix of both both worlds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because technology does make our life easier. It does. But then we also need human interaction, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where all the apps that are there, you know, to keep you accountable to. We'll yeah. have heart rate monitors so you can see what you're doing. It takes you know. the guessing game out of it. Huh? It takes the guessing game out of it. And yeah. for the trainers too, they can see where your heart rate's at on the on the TVs so they can push you 
Or yeah. they can back or you like, down. Oh, yeah. You yeah, get a little like, high there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I always, like I said, manifested this. I always thought, how is this going to happen? And it took doing some homework, different businesses. Like you you know, you know, said, oh, yeah. taking this leap, you have to do your homework. It costs money to jump into these adventures. Yeah, especially I have a know. great team. I have There's three of us owners. And it's amazing the way we've collaborated on this because yeah. I'm only one person. Yeah. They're only one person. Yeah. You can only do so much. Yeah, that's true. And you can uh, only go so far. Exactly. Yeah. You have to you get You have to build a team. Exactly. Whether they're, um, you know, a part of your team or whether you guys create a team that's, you know, equal, but yeah. it, it does, you have to create a team. Yeah. And it's all about strength and weaknesses. You got to yeah. be honest with oh, yourself. Yeah. This is my strength. This is my weakness. Yep. This is yours. This is, you know, we do that and we reassess almost weekly on, okay, what's happening? Yeah. Who's got this? Who's, who's got that? Because well. you got to be efficient with your time. Yeah. Time's valuable. When you yeah. got a family, when you're yeah. my age, yeah. like, man, you don't have the energy you did yesterday. <laughs> so I'm, you got to be smart. I'm sure you. you have more energy than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit of that pre, pre workout, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> but, but whatever. But, yeah. Right? Yeah. So. And you're just going to, you should double down on your strengths. What am I good at yes. versus like giving somebody like half like, oh, I'm not really good at that. I know how to do it, but I'm not that good, right. but I'm going to do it for you. But why not just bring someone in that's really good at that? Yeah. And they're not good at what you do, but that's what you do. Exactly. You know, and so everybody compliments each other. It compliments and enhances the business as a whole. And if everybody has the same picture and goal yeah. and where we're headed, then you're good. Yeah. You know? Heck yeah. That's how championship teams are built. Why can't you build a business same? Yeah. Same no, deal. that's exactly. I mean, that's just how villages, how countries yeah. uh, it's just all about a team effort and absolutely and having the same goal and, and just having the same values and that's it man i mean it's 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 tough but it's fun it's worth it it's yeah. worth it so we look forward we're, we're uh pulling for february late february early march grand opening so look out for it can we to do a video for that yes absolutely i'd like to bring the team in at some point we can <laughs> well I mean, six months down the road or something we'll, yeah. we'll re re we collaborate yeah do a video Video, nice plug there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You said it on camera, by the way. <laughs> Sign this. <laughs> no, absolutely. That would be that would be a joy. You know, I know uh, working with your wife now at the yeah. Griffin, she's doing great. So, you know, anybody that is interested in personal training, you know, please reach out to Griffin Fitness, and we'll be yeah. there for you. Perfect. All right, man. All right. It was nice talking to you. Yeah, great talking to you. Thank you. Boom. All right.